Right, so Iran are apparently gearing up to hit back at Israel and are apparently planning to strike Israeli military and government targets using missile attacks by Iranian proxies, Iran's allies in the Middle East, to launch these from. All of this stems from, of course, that unprovoked attack on the Iranian embassy in Damascus, the Syrian capital, part of which appears to be an Israeli desire to escalate matters in the Middle East, yet the only political calls from the West are towards Iran to not escalate tensions, to not make matters worse. Well, this has me wondering where are the calls for Iran to be able to defend itself then? Israel's been permitted to flatten Gaza and kill tens of thousands of innocent Palestinians as part of its right to defend itself against an occupied territory and occupied people at that, with them as the occupier, as we keep getting told by numerous pathetic politicians globally. From an incursion into Israel, the fatalities from which are a matter of debate still as to how many died at Hamas's hands or Israel's own, yet an historically unprecedented attack on a consulate in another nation entirely, not directly involved at all, and Iran don't have that same right to defend itself? In what way is that possibly right? And if Western leaders really do want to de-escalate tensions, they could look to their own support of an out-of-control rogue nation run by an out of his gourd maniac and start there before they choose to lecture others. Right, so Iran are apparently planning on attacking Israel imminently, planning to target military and government assets in payback to the unprovoked, unwarranted strike on what was a diplomatic building, the Iranian embassy in Damascus. But in all the media, when it comes to talking about this, all we ever hear is that Iran striking at Israel, oh, that'll just escalate tensions. Well, when it was Israel striking Gaza, it was Israel's right, right to defend itself. So, come on, you've got to be even-handed with this, surely. Can't be, you can't have it both ways. I really am getting fed up with this. If Western leaders really wanted to de-escalate tensions, well, where do you start, really? Genocide Joe could stop sending Iranian weaponry to Ukraine, intended for Yemen, and stop arming Israel at the same time. The UK can also pay heed to that legal advice that's been given that it won't publish because we're all supposed to believe them when they say Israel aren't breaking international humanitarian law and keep sending arms to Israel as well as a consequence. Western powers can enforce the rulings of the International Court of Justice and the UN Security Council and get humanitarian aid through with military assistance if necessary to stop the IDF or the settler movements from blocking that, but they won't. It could draw a bloody line at Israel having a right to defend itself for one night of incursion by Hamas compared to six months of outright slaughter against people it already occupies illegally and has done for decades. The US and UK could stop taking pot shots at the Houthis in Yemen who were blockading the Red Sea in support of Gaza and really have been the only avenue of Iranian involvement, having been supplying Yemen with the means to do so. De-escalate tensions. The West could shut Israel down overnight and end the tensions once and for all when Israel is the source of it all. It's the one thing nobody will talk about or consider. Israel's out of control, but as always, be it Biden or Sunak or Cameron or Starmer, it's always Israel's right to defend itself. Why does nobody else seem to ever have that right? Iran is not the nation escalating tensions here. It has been attacked. An embassy, a consulate in another country is treated as sovereign soil to the country who have that embassy, that consulate. They attacked Iranian soil then inside Syria. Israel escalated tensions by doing that. Iran had no, had not proactively been involved itself. Yes, they were supplying Yemen with arms to blockade Israeli shipping. Yes, they have been helping Syria out as well, who officially have been at war with Israel since Israel was created in 1948. So not particularly due to the events and escalation since October 7th. So there's been no direct attack on Israel via Iran, in which case that warranted the bombing of a consulate. In fact, nothing warrants the bombing of a consulate. Israel made history with that move. Nobody in history has ever deliberately targeted an embassy. It's a diplomatic building. It's as low as you can get, surely, but Israel have proven for months they couldn't care less about who or what they are actually targeting. So now Iran are ready to get their own back and attack Israel and are making it clear they do not wish to escalate tensions by doing that. But equally, they also cannot let this pass, cannot let this go. And again, I ask, why is nobody supporting Iran's right to defend itself here, given what has happened? Because if it was the other way round, and this was Israel and Iran had attacked them and blown up one of their consulates, the US, and no doubt us as well here in the UK, and probably others too, would be falling over themselves crying about Israel's right to self-defense yet again when they get their own back. Now, Iran have already done a deal with the US to leave 
their infrastructure alone as long as the US doesn't get in their way, doesn't get involved. So the US really doesn't want to get into a spat, into a some sort of a military action versus Iran. Since I last spoke about that in another video, Iran have said they would de-escalate if some demands of theirs were met, which include, unsurprisingly, a permanent ceasefire in Gaza, which the West, again, could enforce if it had the balls to cut off Israeli support. Because Israel will never agree to it, but actually implies there's some caution from Iran here. I don't wonder if that's because it is just so easy for them to end up being labelled the bad guys, when they are the ones who have been wronged by Israel here. And again, it comes back to where those self-defence calls are coming from and who they are in support of. So we have a situation right now where Iran is saying they're going to retaliate. Sources say it's going to happen soon. Despite that, Iran seemed cautious about how and when that's going to happen, saying they're going to use proxies, agreeing not to hit the US or their targets. And the US saying they won't be drawn into a wider conflict, though despite that, Biden has still given assurances to Netanyahu that the US support for Israel is ironclad, whatever that means. So the US seem to be telling both sides what they want to hear in this right now. It's not in Iran's nature to not do something. Netanyahu, being a madman, has said if Iran attacked Israel, they will retaliate. When they instigated the attack against Iran and are already committing genocide in Gaza and are at war with Lebanon and Syria as it is already. So if anyone is escalating anything here, it is Israel. Yet they remain the only nation not being chastised or told to calm down. The US won't get directly involved, but weapon sales to Israel will just continue, and that in and of itself is the reason things will escalate. For as long as the West keeps enabling a maniac like Netanyahu to attack whoever he likes as a means of drawing more nations into a regional war, things will keep escalating. Stopping Israel, cutting them off, is the only way tensions will calm down, can possibly calm down. Yet there seems to be absolutely no appetite at all amongst Western leaders to do what seems to be bloody obvious to most people, I imagine, by now. And on that score, we have to turn back to our own Foreign Secretary and legal advice sitter honour, David Cameron again. Because he put out a tweet yesterday saying, Today I made clear to Foreign Minister Amir Abdullahan that Iran must not draw the Middle East into a wider conflict. I am deeply concerned about the potential for miscalculation leading to further violence. Iran should instead work to de-escalate and prevent further attacks. Where is Iran's right to self-defence there again, then? They aren't escalating matters. Israel are. Iran are not looking to draw more nations into a wider conflict, but neither are they letting this go, nor should they really, because they do have a right to defend themselves. If Cameron was so worried about escalation, he'd suspend arms licences, but instead he's defending them. And this is all despite he himself, when he was Prime Minister 10 years ago in 2014, suspending arms licences to Israel when they killed 2,000 people in Gaza. Well, 33,000 are dead now. Or is suspending arms licenses now above your pay grade under Sunak? Is it not enough of a high enough death toll for little Rishi yet? If that is the case, why don't you just resign and be done with it instead of carrying on escalating tensions yourself? Look at it this way. The only way to de-escalate tensions is to get everyone around a table and force them to sit down, if needs be, and talk. And in Israel's case, cutting them off for more arms is the way to go along with that. If you believe the opposite is true and war is won on the battlefield, then why are you calling for de-escalation at all? Because you're getting what you want, are you not, in which case? For as long as arms continue to be sold to Israel as the problem at the centre of all of this now, then there can be no peace. There can be no de-escalation. If you want to de-escalate, stop selling them arms to Israel and definitely stop telling sovereign nations who have been attacked by Israel that only Israel have a right to defend themselves. As the messaging continues to seem to be. Well, Cameron is just insultingly pious towards the Iranians, who I dare say had a few choice words to say in private. I've got no idea how to swear in Farsi, but I dare say that you can. Iran and the US have at least been more realistic about the situation, having agreed to stay out of each other's way, though with Biden still backing Israel, who knows what will happen after whatever form the Iranian retaliation takes. But that agreement is covered in this video recommendation here, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.